Well, we've already, of course, seen some snow in Spokane, and even though it's pretty early in the season, the city is preparing now. And this morning we woke up to some of the coldest temperatures of the season so far. We'll be talking about what to expect for the mornings to come, especially as we near Halloween. Oh my, what the? Yeah, it's spooky. That's what people saw as they were driving on a major freeway. This is in California. We are tracking when fire crews expect to contain that big one, the Kincaid fire. Hi everyone, 2000 Sacred Heart nurses will decide today if they will indeed accept the hospital's offer and avoid a walkout. Last week, the nurses voted to go on strike. It is over benefits, time off and patient safety. The nurses are legally required to give a 10 day strike notice. A Providence Healthcare spokesperson says they are negotiating and certainly hoping to avoid a strike. If the nurses decide to go on strike, fill in staff from outside the area will be brought in. A Boston College student was charged with manslaughter. This is in her boyfriend's death. Prosecutors say Alexander Utula took his own life last spring and they are accusing his girlfriend of bullying him into doing it. They say in the two months leading up to his death, she sent more than 47,000 texts with repeatedly emotionally abusive messages. Many of the messages clearly display the power dynamic in the relationship wherein Miss Yu made demands and threats with the understanding that she had complete and total control over Mr. Ertula, both mentally and emotionally. Now, just two years ago, another Massachusetts woman, Michelle Carter, was found guilty of involuntary manslaughter in the death of her boyfriend. She was also accused of using text messages to pressure her boyfriend to commit suicide. The accused girlfriend is currently in South Korea. That's of this most recent case. The DA says they are hoping she turns herself in voluntarily, but if not, they will request that she be returned to the United States. Firefighters in California don't expect to have the state's largest wildfire fully contained, at least until sometime next week. It's called the Kincaid Fire. It is burning in Sonoma County in Northern California. The strong winds are expected to pick up today, so not good news there. The fire destroyed dozens of homes and businesses as well since it began last Wednesday. The fire has now grown to more than 74,000 acres and at this point about 15% contained. It was really scary because um, I thought what if the fire could catch on our house? Folks are going to be out of their homes for a while. Um, it, it is an inconvenience but it's a necessity here. So again asking many people to leave. Meanwhile over in Southern California the Getty Fire swept through some of the country's most exclusive neighborhoods. Both LeBron James and Arnold Schwarzenegger said they evacuated their homes. More than 1,100 firefighters are battling the fire, both from the ground and you can see them from the air as well. California's largest utility, PG&E, leaders say they could cut power to about 2 million people across the state in order to prevent more fires. In the meantime, several Spokane firefighters are headed to California to help fight the wildfires. Seven task forces from the Northwest are also headed there. 31 fire departments across Washington are sending some sort of personnel. Help is also coming from Idaho. Four smaller fire districts in Southwest Washington banded together to send a team of 17 members as well. So everyone from the area pitching in and doing what they can. All right, it is just a few minutes past noon right now. Yesterday we had a bit of snowfall and today we are tracking more cold weather as it moves into the inland northwest. Here to tell us all about it and maybe to mention the word snow is Evan Narani. That's right. So it looks like uh, most of that snow that we saw yesterday was pretty brief and quick moving. It has now cleared out of the region. We're looking at sunny blue skies outside, but in turn, when that sun, when that sky clears out and the overnight temperatures come around, it allows a lot of nighttime uh, uh, change in temperature, a lot of cooling overnight. So that's what we saw this morning. We woke up to some areas in the single digits, especially when you factor in wind chill. Right now we are below freezing still across eastern Washington. Washington and North Idaho, 28 degrees in Spokane and Deer Park, 31 in Coeur d'Alene right now, and 34 in Pomeroy. We are not expecting too much of a warm up from here, only by another few degrees or so. You can see how much that cold front has really taken a toll on us uh, as far as our temperatures go. The 24 hour temperature change in Spokane, it's 13 degrees colder now than just 24 hours ago, 14 degrees colder than this time yesterday in Bonners Ferry, and 12 degrees colder in Pullman. So here's what we see going 
going on outside. Of course, sunny blue skies, temperatures warming up to the mid 30s by the afternoon. Notice that is only a few degrees above freezing and then quickly dipping back down to the uh, teens overnight. We'll be at 21 degrees by 1 a.m., likely dipping down to about 14 overnight. Coming up, we'll take a look at what that Halloween forecast has in store, Laura. You're a little stingy with the warm weather, mister. I know it's hey, I know, <laughs> and this is the time where they want it the most, right? Right. All right. Well, we will keep track of that. In the meantime, Spokane City leaders announced their new snow preparedness plan for the winter months. This comes as we have been, of course, seeing flurries of snow in some areas. And as Evan just talked about, we're seeing pretty cold temperatures for this time of year. Here are some details about the plan this year. If there is more than an inch or two of snow, the mayor says crews will do a nonstop 24 hour cycle of full city plowing. This will take about three days total to complete. Our teams have been tuning up equipment, ordering supplies of de-icer and sand, and practicing right here behind us on the snowplow obstacle course. And while the city says it is prepared, there are some ways you can help the season go smoothly. Make sure you park on the correct side of the street. Always shovel your sidewalks by 9 o'clock in the morning. So for many of us, that means getting up a little bit earlier. Also make sure to move your car from downtown parking lots so crews can get in to clear those areas. And of course, Watch out for the snow plows. If you have to go around one of the vehicles, make sure to pass them on the left. They may not be able to see you, of course, on the right. So they're just asking people to be courteous and careful. All right, 1206 right now, taking a look at some national news. Chicago teachers reached a tentative agreement with their union. The union represents 7,500 school support staff who have been striking alongside 25,000 Chicago teachers. This tentative agreement will expire in 2023, and it still has to be approved by a majority of the membership. Union members will vote today, and the deal won't restart classes until the union also reaches a deal with the city there. So again, we'll keep track of that. Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi said the House will vote this week on a resolution to affirm the impeachment inquiry. Investigators expect to hear testimony today from a current White House leader. In his opening statement, Alexander Vindman is expected to tell lawmakers that he did not think it was proper to demand a foreign government to investigate a U.S. citizen. Well, it's been less than a month since Washington's vaping ban went into effect and some vape shops found a way we're told around the statewide ban on flavored vaping products. The state liquor and cannabis, cannabis board is getting reports that some vape shops are getting around the ban by selling two separate items, unflavored vaping juice and add in flavoring. We will be doing follow up to those that may have already had or still had flavoring, flavored vapor products on their shelves. We'll take enforcement action at that time. It has been approved that we can go forward with orders of a suspension. We're hoping we don't have to do that. So the state's liquor and cannabis board says stores who carry those products could get fined and that suspension could last up to 180 days. And as a consumer, you'll never get in trouble. The state says the temporary ban only applies to the sale of the products. The compliance rate is relatively high right now. So the state says they are simply asking that retailers box the product up and take it off the sales floor. All right, 1208 right now. We're seeing an Arctic cold front coming through to the inland northwest. We've had Evan Narani talking about that, telling us how this record cold front could soon hit Spokane.